key after the launch. Waiting on the pad, just under three minutes. Inside the fairing, the satellite's maintained in cool and clean condition through uh, ventilation inside the, uh, inside the launcher. It looks like he's going to call out uh, one of the final back to Jupiter operations. Waiting for the umbilical mass to uh, be pulled off the launcher. We see this mass with the uh, umbilical plugs which are connected to the, uh, the satellites. base of the fairing and uh, ensure the electrical connection with the satellites. And what happens is they are pulled away. There's the DDO calling out the this disconnection disconnection of, of the, the umbilical, umbilical plugs these are and, electrical then, umbilicals. and then this big metallic mass will be pulled off the launcher there there are connections for the satellites electrical connections for the lower stage and for the upper stage so three the satellites umbilicals. are totally autonomous and uh, on on uh, internal power supply while we are still uh, topping up the uh, oxy liquid oxygen inside the propellant tanks of the first, uh, second, and third stage. Coming up on a minute, we'll be into the final minute, final 60 seconds of this historic uh, first launch of Soyuz. Big crowd on hand, lots of press here, as you can imagine. Witnessing space history. Maybe we should. Uh, Give a rundown on the of the ignition sequence, which you'll see, which is a little different than Ariane. Yeah, this what sequence uh, starts approximately 17 seconds before liftoff, and the 20 engines will be ignited first at low thrust level, then intermediate level, and finally full level, enabling the propulsion for the DDO is going to call out the one minute mark now, and we'll be into the final 60 seconds before liftoff. Top, one minute. Uh, we are within the last minute before liftoff. You can't hear, you uh, can hear a pin drop here in Jupiter. People are so attentive. They're starting to go out here, the invited guests going out on the terraces on either side here. They're going to watch the launch from outside. Remember what Alex said, at minus uh, 15 seconds, the first controlled ignition at a weak pressure, minus 7 seconds, and a second one, an intermediate pressure, testing the engines about 50% monitoring them while it's still on the pad and then at minus three seconds the order is given for the third and final phase at full throttle we'll let you watch there comes the umbilical right on time we're ready to go we'll let you watch the liftoff and we'll be back with you after Soyuz has cleared the tower enjoy it everybody There you have it. A page of space history has just been written, and you were present at its creation, as were we. Alex is almost in tears next to me. Yeah, you were, you were cheering. So is on. And gorgeous. Beautiful uh, lighting up the, uh, up the morning sun. The DDO is saying everything is fine on board. Soy is lifting off perfectly from the soil here in her new home in French Guiana, Guyana, beginning her mission number 1777. These pictures will go around the world. They're already on the Internet. You'll see them in the papers and TV tomorrow. Uh, 313 tons at liftoff, less than half of the mass of uh, Ariane 5. Alex, on the left, on the upper part of the screen, what are we looking at? Uh, the white curve, which shows the uh, flight prediction, which is entirely computed, and the white spot uh, on the curve shows the real-time position of the launcher. This position is regularly sent by the launcher telemetry system and received by the tracking stations and then sent to Kourou and uh, where it is transmitted to the computers here in Kourou and uh, you can see the curve and the spot on it. So you can follow that normal. along with that. The DDO says everything is normal on board. On the lower left, the two bottom lines, A and V. On the lower left, then we have the altitude, uh, 30, 36, 37 kilometers now, and the velocity, 1.6 kilometers per second. And the speed needed to inject the satellites is? Will be at about uh, 7.